Hey guys, today we are going to start making the album for the large keepsake box. Um, this is the large keepsake box that we made already in the previous videos, and I'll link those videos below. I will also link the uh, printable, where you can get the printable templates below as well. But today we're going to start with the album, and here's my prototype for the album. So um, what we're going to do today, I think, is we're going to start, we're going to do the cover first, and then we'll move on to the pages. What you're going to need is some chipboard, which I happen to have some scraps here from making uh, the different boxes and whatnot, and then... Um, I'm using the Paper Collection Sweet Peppermint by Prima. Um, it's a really pretty soft, vintagey looking Christmas collection. And then, let's see, I'm going to need my score pal. And I'm going to need my templates. Okay, so the templates we're going to need, I've already printed out a lot of the stuff even for the album, so let me get to the covers. Um, let's see, the covers start on page nine. So page nine is the actual templates for the chipboard. So that's what I'm gonna get out first. I'm pretty sure these are large enough. So what I did was I printed the uh, page nine onto that blue page that I gave you in the templates. Um, and then cut it out just so I know that this one goes with the large keepsake uh, templates. So what I'm going to do, I might, it might work for, uh, too small for that side. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down here like that. I'm going to trace around it. Oh boy, my stomach just growled. I hope you couldn't hear that. <laughs> then I'm going to go ahead and take the spine piece and I'm going to lay it right next to it. Line it up, trace around it. And so then you need two cover pieces, so I'm gonna trace it on this one, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all three pieces traced, and let me scooch these aside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler, and I'm gonna take a big box cutter type knife, and I'm going to try to cut right on the inside of that line. You can go right on the line. It's fine. My pencil lead happens to be really thick right now, so I need to sharpen it. So I'm going to try to go on the inside. Like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this loose here. Move that, aside. Whoop. Move that aside. Then I'm going to cut these two apart. So I'm going to go right in the center of that line that I made. So with this uh, template, this mini album template, there's only one size. Um, if you make it exactly the way um, I have it designed. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out and I'll be right back. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this cover, I'm not going to wrap the edges. Um, I don't think I need to do anything to the spine because you won't see any of it. But like with the box, I did the distress stain on the edge. So the front covers are going to be completely covered with paper, but then on the inside it's just going to be matted. So on one side, I am going to... Um, you, oops, where'd it go? That wasn't it. I've lost my distress stain. Here it is. So I'm going to use the distress stain, the same one that I used on the box, and I'm going to do on one side, I'm going to go all the way around. You may not need to go all the way around, but I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around just on one side and on the edges. Like that. And then I'm going to tip it up and go around all the edges like this. So I'm going to do this to both of these cover pieces. And I'm not going to do it to the spine piece because it will be completely covered all the way around. Alright, so I've got that dried. I've got all the edges covered with a distress uh, stain. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them over. And I am going to add score tape all around all four edges 
of the side that I did not put um, the distress stain. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around on both pieces. Okay, so I've got that done. What I want to do is I've picked out the stripe just to like I did with the cover of the box. I wanted it to kind of match. So I think what I'm going to do, I don't know if I'll be able to get the stripe to, there we go. It'll match like that. So I'm going to flip it over to the back side. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these down and then I'm going to cut them out. I don't know why I think I can get this with my fingernail because I never can. <laughs> okay, but before I stick it down, I'm going to use my Fibertac by Beacon. Use whatever glue you have, tacky glue, uh, a tape runner, whatever, whatever is your favorite. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of fill in just a little bit along the center there. No big deal. It looks like it's a lot more glue than it is. When you go around in a circle like that, it kind of helps um, disperse it a little bit. Okay, so what did I decide here? So I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna get this wrong. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just line it up in the corner as best I can. I can always trim it off if I go over too much or don't go over enough, I guess. And I'm just gonna push it down, flip it over. I used to have a, um, like a, let me see if I can find it. Well, I used to have like a Teflon um, thing. It's like where you burnish stuff down, it's like real, real, real wide. <laughs> Um, which made it nice to do stuff like this, but I can't find it. I don't know what I did with it. I'm sure I tucked it in some drawer somewhere. Well, anyway, so you burnish that down really good. Oh, let me get my mat back out. So I'm going to get my mat out, and then I'm going to just cut it out with my craft knife. Oh, I forgot. This thing ain't very sharp. Shoot. I need to put a new blade on. This kind of stinks. There we go. This is a Martha Stewart craft knife, which is my favorite. I like the handle the best out of all of them. Okay, so now we've got one side covered and one side not. So I'm gonna repeat the process with this one and I'll be right back. Okay, look, I found it. This is what I was talking about. This is like a, uh, it's like the Teflon, uh, material just like the Teflon bone folders um, that are so awesome um, except this one makes it easier to really get a good burnish down and even pressure um, so I found it I actually looked over it like four times so there we are found it <laughs> not an absolutely necessary thing to have but um, it does make it quick and easy and even and smooth okay so both of them are now covered on the one side and then we still got our spine piece so I've already, let's see, here is page number 10, which is the inside mats for the cover, so I've already printed that off, so I'm going to put that aside, and then here's page number 11, which is the spine, outside spine cover, inside spine mat, and the binding, and it's very important that you print this on the back side of the pattern paper you want to use, so I don't, can you tell that I've printed it out, but this is the paper that I want to show. Okay, so I've printed it on the back side. So now, all we need to do is cut these out. I'm gonna get my big uh, Fiskars Precision Heavy Duty Rotary Paper Trimmer, my favorite. Um, I think I'll show you how to cut these spines out first. So I'm just going to trim this edge off. there and then I think I'm going to trim down here I'm going to separate I'll show you I'll show you up close in just a second I'm going to separate these two pieces okay so it looks like this when it's together so this is the spine piece for the outside of the cover and this is the spine piece for the inside of the cover so I separated those two pieces right there okay so then I'm going to go ahead and 
trim these out and then I'll be back okay I have all the pieces cut out so this is the outside spine that's the inside mat and the binding and then I also cut out the two cover mats the two inside cover mats does this have enough yeah so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to oops I'm going to ink everything up with my favorite archival ink and coffee by Ranger um, and I'm going to use a Tim Holtz blending tool I'm going to ink these two pieces I'm going to ink the outside of these two pieces I'm going to ink the two outer edges of the outside spine and then I'm going to ink all the way around the inside spine now remember we printed it on the back side okay um, so I'm going to do that and I'm not going to do anything for the binding just yet but so I'm going to do that right now and I'll be right back okay everything's inked and ready to go um, I think the next thing I'm gonna do you have options here you can go ahead and put your lining your mat on the inside of the cover first before you do um, your spine or you can wait till later either way it's up to you but I'm gonna go ahead and put mine on first I'm just gonna use my Fabri-Tac um, I'm gonna put it on now and then um, attach the whole thing together with my spine pieces and stuff and there should be approximately somewhere between an eighth of an inch and three eighths of an inch oops I better hurry and get that glue look isn't that awesome can you, you probably can't see it <laughs> big old glob of glue go ahead and get them both attached down and I'm gonna smooth them out with my newfound Teflon thingamabob let's see uh, you can't hardly read the words, so I'm not really going to be concerned if it's right or wrong. All right, where's my thing, my bob? So then you can use this to smooth this out too, to smooth the glue out. Lovely. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to attach the covers to the spine piece and the spine piece to the spine piece. Does that make sense? I think it does. So here's how it works. We're going to attach this chipboard spine piece that we have. Oh, <laughs> my dogs decided they wanted to play with their toys. That's nice. Well, if you hear a dog toy squeaking, I apologize. <laughs> oh, I hope it's not too bad. Hang on, let me go see if I can. Oh, wait, maybe they stopped. Nope, hold on. <laughs> well, we'll see how long that lasts. Probably not very long, but hey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my score tape and I'm just going to add it to the spine piece. I'm going to go all around the edges and I'm going to make a few uh, strips in the middle. So you can see on your spine piece, on your outer spine piece that's going to wrap around the covers, there's all these lines, okay? So the two innermost lines is where you want to stick that chipboard piece for the spine, okay? And you want to try to keep it an even, I think it's about an inch, top and bottom. Um, you don't have to be super precise, you know, just try to get it even from the top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the backing from this tape. And we're going to stick her down. Okay, you can use the glue stick here if you want to. Um, but if you hold it up on its edge, you know, it usually gives you enough time. So um, there's no scoring yet. You don't have to do any scoring. This is just like a guide to help you place the pieces um, together. So I'm going to flip that over, burnish it down with my newfound Teflon burnisher. <laughs> I don't know what the name is. It's not a bone folder, I don't guess. Okay, so I've got that on there. And then the next step, so we're going to take our two covers. We're going to try to see. They're both going the same way. Um, I wanted to go the other way. I don't well. Oh, well. They're going to go the opposite direction of the cover, it looks like. But that's okay. Whoops. Now I'm moving lights around. 
All right, so what we want to do is we want to take some score tape. Well, I just had the edge. Where'd you go? There it is. We just want to go on one edge on the outside here. And we're going to go on one edge on the outside of this one. Like that. And then on this piece, the spine piece, we're going to run a piece all the way down the edge of this on each side. Like that. Okay. So then I'm going to take the backing off of one side. The This doesn't have a direction, so it doesn't really matter which way is which. Boy, my dogs are just not being very, um, they're not being very calm today. All right, and then I'm going to take the backing off of this one. And again, you can use the glue stick trick, but if you hold it up on an angle, um, it's not too bad. And so what we're going to do is we're going to line the cover piece, this cover piece up to this next line. You see how there's an eighth of an inch gap there? So we're just going to, oh, wait a minute, there is a, yeah, that's the right way. So we're just going to line this up, and we're going to try to keep this even with the top of the um, spine piece. So I'm going to have to try to get over top of it without getting my head in the way here. And we're just going to lay it down. Just like that. So now that is attached to that spine piece and you see there's still that eighth of an inch gap there. So we're going to flip it around and we're going to do the same thing to this side. Going to match it up to that line and keeping it even with the spine piece. This is funny. Y'all should see me. I'm on my tippy toes, trying to look over top of it, and hoping that I got it. Whoop, hoping that I got it right. Okay. How good I do? Ah, not too shabby. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So then, what you want to do is, I'm going to go ahead and add some tape. How do I want to do this? I'm going to add some tape to this. On top and bottom. And then I think I'm going to add some tape to this top and bottom. Since you've got those lines there, it should be easy. Because you don't want to go on that inside crease there because then it might get your book might get stuck. So nobody wants that. So I'm going to show you on this one side and then I'm going to repeat the process on the other. First thing I want to do though is I do kind of want to do a quick little um, score there just to help it fold. So I'm going to take the backing off of this one, this one, And I'm going to stand it up on its side, and then again, I'm going to do a quick little score. Oops. Like that. And I'm going to fold it over. Finish that down real good. Okay, so now we've got a nice um, covered spine area. I'm going to do the same thing to this side, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got both ends wrapped. Nice. So then what I want to do is, here's my inside mat, and it goes right here. And it should be pretty perfect. If it's not, that's okay. This is a handmade gift, but it should be pretty perfect, so it goes right here. So the reason for the lines on this is that way you don't have to guess over here where you put your tape. You just go here and put your tape all along the edges 
so that it sticks down. Okay, so you can see that I did not put it on the center part there, and I really didn't run it this way. I just figured there's enough tape on there that it's really going to hold it. So it's going to it's going to be there's going to tape it's going to be taped here and here, and that's it. So I'm going to remove all this backing off of here, and I'll return in just a moment. Okay, so now that is all good and taped up. And I am I'm going to give myself a little bit of uh, wiggle room. I'm going to use a glue stick on this one because um, there's an awful lot of tape on here and once it's down, it's down, you know? Okay. So then I'm just going to line it up. It should match up with your mats. Um, your cover mats should be the same height. And it should match up top and bottom with your your spine mat, your outside spine mat. See how how that works? Okay, so I'm gonna burnish this down real good. I really wanna make sure it gets good and stuck. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we want to gently start folding it in a little bit where we've left those gaps. You want to do this gently because you don't want to tear your paper so you just kind of want to maybe you know a little bit at a time and that will help out a lot. And using you know your bone folder to just gently you know crease that paper a little bit more helps a lot too. So you just want to gently work because if you go too fast it will split your spine. And if it does, it does, right? That's what's ink. That, what, that is what ink is for. It will cover up all of that. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Just take your time. No split so far. That doesn't mean it won't split ever. It just means I didn't split it as of yet. <laughs> so wiggle it a little bit. Now we need to just ink up all the edges now make it look like it is one whole piece. Looks so pretty. At least I think it does. Um, and then we want to go ahead, if, yeah, I guess you don't have to, but I'm going to get these edges here. Okay. Let's see. Now what do we want to do? Now, I think I got it upside down. No, no, I don't. Yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. You can't hardly see it. It's upside down no matter which way you look at it. That's upside down. This is right side up. Maybe. Oh, you know what? I think it's in a different language. So it may not matter. Upside down, right side up. Oh, well. So there you have it. You can, if you want to, you can try to get this little inside crease here, a little color just so it doesn't seem so stark. Not necessary. But the reason I designed it this way is that way your inside and outside spine, you know, kind of look the same. And then your binding piece will also match your spine. So it doesn't really look so out of place. So let's do the binding piece next. So I've already trimmed it out. So this book can only hold three pages if you're using this binding. So all you need to do is, once you've cut it out, just go ahead and score on the marks. I always cut this out crooked, but it does not matter. If you don't want to use the one that I provided for you, it's just a half an inch increment. That's it, just a half an inch. Okay, so then what we want to do is we just want to go ahead and prep all of those score marks. like that. And so this is the side we're going to be putting our tape on because this is the side 
that we want to be seen um, in between the pages. So what I'm going to do is first thing is I'm going to fold it in half like this and there will be tape. This will be taped together, okay? And then these two pieces here will be attached to the spine itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape on. Let me see here. How come I'm having trouble finding my end? There we go. I'm going to put tape on this piece. And I'm going to double, I'm going to layer it up, double, double, well. And then I'm going to put tape on this piece. And I'm going to put tape on this piece. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this center piece off. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to fold it together like this. So now I have this. So on the back side, it looks like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run one more strip of tape right down the middle here where those two pieces connected together. So it looks like that, right? All right, but before I take that tape off, I do want to ink a little bitty bit of this. Um, I want to ink these edges on the outside top and bottom and then if I can I'm gonna flip this the other way and just kind of ink these just a little bit because you see it just ever so slightly it doesn't have to be perfect I'm gonna flip it this way do this side probably should have done that before it took Put the tape on there. Okay, so now I have something that looks like this. The other pieces you're not going to see. Oh, I might want to do this edge right here. Just in case the page doesn't... Well, I know it's not going to go all the way down to the edge there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add this to the spine. Now, it should fit perfectly on the inside mat of the spine. And so what you want to do is you want to have a half an inch from here, a half an inch from here, and you want to match it perfectly on the top and bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing here. And then maybe I should use a little bit of glue stick just so I have a minute. This, by the way, is just regular old um, Hobby Lobby Paper Studio glue stick. Nothing fancy. So then I just want to kind of line it up. Try to get try to get it even. If it's not even, that's okay. Don't stress out over it. Um, that looks pretty good. So once you got it down, then just burnish. So now you've got um, all of your centerpieces look like your spine piece, which is why I put all three of these pieces together on the same page um, so that you could match it all up. And it looks really, really nice. So there we go. Okay, so that is the basic cover construction. You can do the cover in different ways. You can wrap the edges if you want to. Do it however you want. Um, this is just the way I chose to do this one. Um, but it's pretty easy, right? Pretty cool, pretty simple. Um, next up, we're going to do the pages. So if you want to kind of get a jump start before the video comes out, what you're going to need to make this album is you're going to need page two, or I'm sorry, <laughs> page one in the album. You're going to need it three times. So that is the minimum. Um, so I've got three of page one, and then I've got one of page two. One of page three, um, one of page four, which is this one, one of page five, one of page six, and then um, I haven't decided yet on the inserts and things. I've got some ideas, so page seven and eight I'm going to hold off on. But if you're going to do it the exactly same way I'm going to do it, those are the pages you're going to need for the next video. So 
Again, all the links will be in the description box below. It's all of the products that I used as best as I can. Um, and of course the printable will be linked below. Okay, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, be sure to subscribe if you have not already. There should be a circle right about now over here and then there should be two videos that you might be interested in. So, I uh, hope you liked it and I will see you next time. Bye.